The SM-6 multipurpose missile is the only weapon in the country's current arsenal that offers highly maneuverable knockout capabilities. Hypersonic threat. This comes after the agency disclosed plans last year to test an unspecified version of the SM-6 against advanced threat maneuvers, a term usually associated with non-powered hypersonic glide vehicles, sometime in fiscal year 2024. U.S. Navy Vice Admiral John Hill, the head of the U.S. Missile Defense Agency, or MDA, said. Hill made his remarks about the SM-6 during a discussion about hypersonic defense capabilities at the American Society of Naval Engineers Combat Systems Symposium, which opened on January 31 and ends today. NDA is leading an effort to develop a layered defense architecture against hypersonic threats that includes an array of terrestrial and space-based sensors and multiple types of interceptors, as you can read more about here. The SM-6 series is really the nation's only hypersonic defense capability, Hill said, without specifying any particular version of this missile. He added that these weapons have a nascent capability to engage incoming hypersonic threats that are maneuvering to a high degree. We didn't call it that back when we got the letter from the CNO Chief of Naval Operations, the Navy's top uniformed officer, to go develop this program, he explained. But the whole idea was to handle high-speed maneuver. Hill's comments are immediately interesting for a number of reasons. Currently, there are two variants of the SM-6 in service, the Block I and Block Iowa, while a third version, the Block IB, is under development. The Block IB missile is substantially different from the two earlier types, including its completely redesigned body and the larger rocket motor. It is expected to be able to reach hypersonic speed itself and therefore have greater capabilities against hypersonic threats. The Block I and Block Iowa missiles are generally described as surface-to-air missiles, though they also have a surface-to-surface -surface strike capability. In addition, they do have missile defense capabilities, but which are more typically described as the ability to engage incoming cruise missiles, as well as more traditional ballistic missiles, or separate re-entry vehicles they release in the terminal phase of flight. It is important to note that those targets are traveling at hypersonic speeds at that point, but that even advanced maneuvering types would not be as nimble as a purpose-built hypersonic boost glide vehicle. In addition, boost glide vehicles travel along an atmospheric trajectory compared to more conventional ballistic threats, which also makes them more difficult to spot and track. All told, whatever capability existing SM6s might have against hypersonic threats would still appear to be limited. MDA is actively pursuing a new interceptor optimized against things like boost glide vehicles as part of the Glide Phase Interceptor GPI, program. In November 2021, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman received contracts to build competing GPI designs. Raytheon is the prime contractor behind the SM6 series. Interceptors of any kind are, of course, just one part of the hypersonic defense equation. Sensors able to detect and provide target-grade tracks of those threats are essential. The U.S. military has already identified gaps in its capabilities in this regard and is working to fill them, including through the development of a space-based hypersonic and ballistic tracking space sensor, HBTSS. MDA has hired both Northrop Grumman and L-3 Harris to build prototype HBTSS satellites with the goal of starting on-orbit testing of the two designs in 2023. What the final HBTSS constellation might look like, and how many satellites it might have, in total, remains unclear. We're going to take those first hypersonic tracking space-based sensors in coordination with the U.S. Space Force, and we're going to get them on in orbit, Vice Administration. Hill said in regards to HBTSS at the Combat Systems Symposium. That's through a competitive process, and we're really excited about that. We did so much risk reduction on the ground we're absolutely confident that those sensors are going to deliver what we need when we put them up.
We're going to leverage space queuing and fire control from space because, to handle maneuvers across the globe, you've got to look downhill explained, emphasizing the importance of added sensor capabilities in space. The field of view is limited from terrestrial radars, and we're running out of islands to put radars on, 